Welcome to everybody. The topic here today, 2023 estate planning changes, changes in law you need to be aware of, and some 2022 year-end tips. And just a reminder, if you haven't already subscribed to our Gilfix Law YouTube channel, easy to find us, just Gilfix Law on YouTube. We have a, a num. it's growing every day. It's fun to see, but we want to put a lot of free educational content out there. So spread the word. Um, so let's jump in here today and welcome to everybody. I always want to take a moment to ask, why are you here today? We all have so many demands on our time, and we really appreciate you spending some time with us here today. Are you confused about your family's finances or just about new laws, or do you just feel like, I don't know what to do or what I need to be aware of when it comes to estate and tax planning? Do you feel overwhelmed? Well, we're here to help. Um, we're here to help you control what you can control when it comes to estate and gift tax planning and estate planning and those issues. And we're going to go over what you need to know about some key law changes um, and some ideas related to that. So what is the overview of what we're going to talk about today? We're going to go over the 2022 election outcomes. You may have heard we had a little election um, a few months ago. Um, some crucial planning deadlines on the horizon, some year-end gifting tips, and related to that, how to help family members in a totally tax-free way. We're going to go over some health reminders. We want everybody to be vibrant and healthy. We're going to go over a 2023 planning checklist at the end to give you a, hey, what are the questions you should be asking and how can you take action if you need to? We always have to point out this is for educational purposes only. It's not legal advice. It doesn't form an attorney-client relationship. We can only do that if we meet with you one-on-one. -on -one. And we, of course, would always welcome the chance to do that if you're not already a client. Um, so as we settle in here today, I think many of you probably know us. But for those of you who don't, we are. Uh, I'm Mark Gilfix. This is Michael Gilfix. We are both partners at Gilfix and LaPole Associates. Uh, we've been around in the Bay Area for 40 years now. I'm very proud of our heritage, one of the first firms in the country to really focus on elder law and estate planning. In fact, Mike, Michael Gilfix and my mother, Myra Gerson Gilfix, were some of the founders of the field of elder law. I think, Mike, you actually may have come up with that term. You owned the trademark for the term elder law when it was originally created. And we owned it for a while. Yeah, yeah. donated it to one of the many organizations you created. Um, but we've served thousands of families throughout California. If you're in California, we can help you. Um, so from San Diego to Wairica, and our, our mission and our goal is to provide extraordinary value and, of course, peace of mind. Um, so on that note, why don't we talk about the day that we're actually giving this presentation and, and what it means, Mike? Yeah, it's a, it's a celebration. Um, December 21 is really kind of a famous day, right? It's the winter solstice. It's the shortest day of the year. It starts getting warmer in theory. Days get longer. A lot to celebrate, right? Uh, time of celebration generally, but we thought we'd also share with you, these are all true, by the way. It is also Humbug Day. Huh? You know, where, where, where did that come from? But it is. This is a nationally known, if you, if you look it up, and it's also look on the bright side day. It's kind of an antidote to the Humbug Day. So we got both of those. National French Fried Shrimp Day. Who knew? Huh? Um, maybe you're motivated to go have a, have a snack after that. So you know, it's Hanukkah, it's Christmas, New Year's is coming. It's a time to celebrate. And as I alluded to just before we got started, I, I thought I would just, you know, share some quick thoughts about year end and, and how we think about this. So um, our goal here is to give you some ideas and thoughts that are timely, uh, impactful, things that make will make a great deal of sense, we believe, for your family. And we ask you to think about being proactive as you do this. Um, at, at the year end, as I, as I mentioned earlier, we do kind of look back. We get a little pensive usually at some point. How did the year go? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What problems came up? And what, what joys did I have? What successes? It's the same kind of thing we do for New Year's resolutions. And, and most of us make those resolutions. Um, many of you, I'm going to take care of my trust. I'm going to take care of my estate planning. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. We overload ourselves typically. We don't get around to it. And the year goes by. And as we know, as we get older, the days go faster. And the next thing you know, another year has gone by. So the messages we're going to convey here are really, again, really practical, meant to help you and your family. Uh, they only work if you take advantage of these actions. So be proactive. Don't just knock this off to, ooh, another educational thing I'll, 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 I'll listen to and move on. 
Be proactive. That's where success is. So please think about that as we go forward. And okay, and what a great transition to the elections. Okay, uh, this is why we do conclude that the likelihood of any any changes in major legislation are just unlikely. You know, there's no red wave that was expected. Things just didn't really change that much. We still have the split at the, at the, at the federal level, as we have on the next uh, as, on the next slide. Uh, at the federal level in the House, barely Republican controlled, and they're having a heck of a time getting their act together. Um, neither party can herd cats anymore. It's it's. I feel bad for the leaders. No, I don't. What am I? I don't feel bad for the leaders. No. Take that back. Um, but the Senate is under Democratic control. The House and the presidency, of course, with the Democrats. So it just isn't well, the House with Republicans now. What? House with Republicans. If I misspoke, absolutely. Um, <laughs> having a field day there. Uh, and will there be a change in 2024? You know, maybe. Uh, but nothing looks like there's going to be any sort of uh, uh, change. That's a, sort of a, a systemic change. So what does it mean? It means that the tax laws in place now, and our focus is really on the state tax, capital gains tax, not so much income tax. It's not our focus today at all. Not likely that any of that has changed. So what we have now is what we're going to have to live with for years. So there are deadlines coming. There are certain things that are going to change. They'll, it'll happen sooner than you think. So again, you just don't want to let time go by and wait for the 11th hour. You got to be pro it takes time to process so many of the issues that we're going to identify and, and that are so important for your family. So, yeah, we're going to be practical. Exactly. And, and, and nothing changes, really, as we've seen, unless one party controls all three branches, the presidency, the Congress and the Senate. And Democrats had all three recently and they barely passed any major tax law change. They did pass a spending bill, but they didn't really change tax laws. We thought it was going to happen and it, it didn't. So we have to plan with what we see in the future. Um, California elections, um, the key is what didn't happen. So one, there was a measure on the ballot to increase um, income taxes for ultra high net worth uh, earners, people who are earning over $2 million a year. That got defeated, which maybe is a sign that California voters are finally going to stop voting for new taxes. But 19, which did pass a few years ago, remains law. There was an effort to overturn it. It came up woefully short to even make the ballot. So it remains law. And this isn't the focus of our talk today because it, it's not necessarily changing as we get to the new year. But if you have followed us, we hammer this because of all the families that are going to be affected by this, maybe 1% are actually really aware of what's happening. And Prop 19 means, which is still law and looks like it'll be a law for a while, um, it means that when properties pass from parents to their children or really to anybody else, Property taxes can spike by 5x, 10x, 20x. We have some clients where they're facing property annual property tax increases of over $40,000 a year for one property when it goes to their kids, unless they plan ahead. Because Prop 19 gutted what used to be some protective laws that, that prevented major um, property tax increases when assets went from parent to child. So the bottom line is we have a lot of webinars on this. Go to our Gilfix Law channel if you want to learn more about this. Um, we have one called How to Preserve Low Property Taxes. Um, but most importantly, if you hope to leave property to your kids, if you have your house, and especially if you have rental properties in California, you need to talk to us. There are solutions we've developed that can save hundreds of thousands of dollars for future generations. So you just need to be aware. We're just going to remind you, Prop 19 is a major issue. If you're concerned about this, set a meeting with us. We can discuss it and the solutions and how it affects you. So, you know, I, you know, I want to add that uh, this is an issue for every homeowner. It is particularly important to be, you know, really direct. And we are direct. If you are older in poor health, where your passive could happen within the next couple of years, or if you're yeah. Your 50s or 60s, you have parents who have property that might be passed along. So yeah. there really is an urgency here. Uh, this is permanent law. So it isn't like it's going to sunset or disappear or evolve. Yeah. It's a, a permanent change that should capture everybody's attention. Yeah, we've had many adult children pay for their parents to do this planning uh, because really they're the ones who benefit. And the return on investment is insanely good if you want to hold on to property. So, Mike, why don't we talk about some key estate and gift tax law changes? Right. So um, this is the estate tax. This is the amount of money uh, that you can pass along at your death without exposure to the estate tax. It's a 40% tax. It's a very stiff tax. And interestingly, as many of you know, 
It's actually a transfer tax. Uh, you have the opportunity to pass away and utilize this level of protection, or you can make a gift of that amount, and there's no gift tax. So the current level of protection is a little over $12 million, and it increases rather substantially in 2023 on January 1 to a little under $13 million. So for a couple, that's like $26 million. So very few couples are exposed to the estate tax currently. Coming on the horizon, however, is a change. The current legislation will sunset. It had a time limit on it. It was some of the, um, uh, it had many, many tax aspects to it, but it's going to end. And in 2026, at the end of 2025, this protection is going to drop very substantially to a little under, to about uh, six and a half million per person. Still a lot, still a lot. But for the time being, we have a slight increase, which is really more planning opportunity. The annual exclusion. That's the amount of money you can give away without reporting it to anybody. It doesn't erode your lifetime. It's stayed in gift tax protection at all. It's invisible with the IRS. So the current level, 2022 is $16,000. It's going up $1,000 in 2023. Not a gigantic increase, but if you have many family members, it's important. And just to know that if you're going to take maximum advantage of this, so many folks still think it's $10,000 because that's what it started at. You know, at least it's got a, it is indexed, as you can see, uh, by these increasing numbers. So back to the estate tax a little bit more. Um, it is going to change very dramatically. And if you have an estate that's, that's a little larger, we'll, we'll show some numbers in a moment. Uh, the, 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 the penalty for not acting is severe. Again, everything over the limit is taxed at 40%. That's a massive tax by any measure. So what can we do there? There's a lot that we can do. Um, we're not going. Well, yeah. yeah, and I think like, who needs to worry about the estate tax? Why don't we go to those those numbers where you need to really be thinking about it. you in this in parts of California, just owning a home might mean you have to worry about this. Right. Uh, so the numbers make sense here if you take a moment uh, and, and take a look at these with us. That uh, as you look to the future, number one, your estate's going to grow. So if you're a single person and your estate is around five million or more, given growth, it's probable that you will have estate tax exposure at some point in your in your life. If you're a couple and your estate is at or over $10 million, maybe even nine, the way property values go, a rebound in the stock market, which us optimistic specs expect, um, the estate's going to be larger than you think. So you don't you don't freeze your perception of the size of your estate. You're realistic. You take a look to the future, realize it's probably going to grow. And that you could have increasing exposure that, that you didn't expect. And remember, life insurance policies are part of your taxable estate. Retirement accounts are part of your taxable estate. You may be inheriting something that would add to your taxable estate. So again, think proactively, think about the future, stay in tune with it so you don't miss any opportunities. Millions of dollars are at stake. It's remarkable. Uh, let's go into this, Mark, and uh, get something, put some, put some additional... Yeah. So, so there's a lot. There are so many techniques that we can use to reduce your taxable estate or to save millions of dollars. If you face these taxes, the one good thing, I mean, well, one, the exemption is quite high right now. Um, but the other good thing is, even if you're facing this, there's a lot that we can do. I mean, I don't think there's an area uh, in the investment world or the legal world where there's a bigger bang, bang for your buck than estate and gift tax planning. If you face these issues, there are so many techniques that we can use to save millions of dollars. They're totally legal. This is not hiding the ball. This is not doing anything shady. Um, you, we have a webinar ex specifically about this. If you have more questions, it's called Estate Planning for High Net Worth Families. It's on the Guildfix Law channel if you want to see some more specific examples. But there are many techniques. Um, one is right before the, the exemption drops, you give away $12 million. It's use it or lose it. You'd have to give away a, a large amount to do that. It doesn't have to be that. There are special trusts. If you're married, you can set up a special trust for your spouse to lock in $12 million plus of protection. Um, you can use LLCs or gift partial shares of real estate or use entities to discount the value of your estate, where if you give away a small piece of real estate, the IRS lets you reduce the value of that. So giving away 30% of a $1 million property is not a $300,000 gift. 
but ways we can discount that because you can't sell 30% of a property. So we can make the value of your estate almost vanish when it comes to uh, how the IRS looks at it. We're not here to go into too many details there, but there are charitable remainders trusts. If you want to help out charities and get income during the rest of your life in a tax favored way, many, many techniques and anything that you give away, keep in mind too, while you're alive, if that continues to grow in value, well, you've removed the growth of that of the value of those assets from your estate tax exposure. So there's a lot of ways that we can reduce the taxable value of your estate. We do want to start. We don't want to wait till the deadline. It's too late to do a lot then. So if you have these issues, talk to us. Uh, Mike wrote a book about this, Beat Estate Tax Forever. It's available on Amazon.com and on our website, Gilfix.com. And any clients that work with us get a free copy, of course, maybe even an autographed free copy. Um, but I think the main thing is <clears throat> you act now. If you're if you're thinking about this, um, you need you need to take action before it's too late. Um, it's use it or lose it. Once the, once the exemption drops, we lose these opportunities really forever. And we also have the sixteen thousand dollar annual exemption. And Mike, I know I was going to do. Why don't you do, talk about how you can give away sixteen thousand dollars a year? Some examples of how that works if you just want to help out family members. Gee, there's, there's uh, so many opportunities here. Uh, keep in mind, by the way, it isn't just the family members. You can give away this money. Yeah. Anybody, your friendly lawyer, right? or anybody, anybody you know, yeah. you like. <laughs> uh, a lot of folks make gifts to you know, godchildren, stepchildren, uh, friends who are in need if they have an opportunity. And the receipt of a gift, by the way, of any amount is not a taxable event. So that's a real important point. You give away 16000 you don't report it to the IRS. The recipient doesn't report it to the IRS. It's very clean and really, really very, very simple. So that means a couple, right? $32,000 per year. Well, it's going to go up a little bit, but uh, per child or per recipient. So you do the math. If there's 10 people, obviously, that's a huge amount of money. We do have a few clients who are both generous and wealthy, and they do max out, and it makes a remarkable difference to your loved ones. You can also... Fundamental points here, in addition to these annual exclusion gifts that you can make that don't erode your lifetime estate and gift tax protection, you can also pay tuition for anybody. You can pay medical bills for anybody. The key there is you don't give them the money to make these payments. You have to pay the entity or the business uh, directly yourselves. Um, we always like to point out that if, um, you know, I, some of you know Len Tellum. You might remember that I did a lot of work with Len. He was on KGO radio and he made this observation once. And my God, what an insight. He said, if your kids know that they're going to get their annual exclusion gift on Thanksgiving, they're coming to your house for dinner. They're not going to the other in-laws. No, it's an insight. You never know when that could come in handy. So, you know, there are some relatively straightforward We'd call these low-hanging fruit. These are the easiest things to do. And obviously, charitable giving, by the way. Now, that removes money from your estate. You get some income tax deductions. We're real fans of charitable giving. We're involved, Mark and I, and so many on boards of directors. Uh, you know, it's a very, it's a favored thing for us. But on this particular slide, the emphasis on what you can do for family members, loved ones, people that you care about. And just to note, um, the 16,000 per year going up to 17,000 per year. It's, it's interesting that it, people get confused about this. The estate tax exemption, 12.06 million this year, 12.92 million next year. That is the max that you can give no matter how many people you're giving it to. So one person has the 12 million, two people, 24 million. The gift exempt, the annual exemption, 16,000, you can give 16,000 to as many people as you want. So as Mike said, if you want to give it to 10 different people, that's 160,000 you just gave away. You don't have to report it to the IRS, but you can give more than 16,000 per year to anybody. But if you give more than $16,000 per year, you have to file a gift tax return for any amount over that. It's a form 709 and you don't owe any taxes on it unless you've already given away over $12 million. So it really is like taking it off your... $12.06 million tab if you give more than the $16,000 exemption amount. Keep in mind, for many of you who worked with us, um, if you've created family protection trusts, dynasty trusts for your kids, or if you have a child with a disability, special needs trusts, trust, those types of trusts don't get the $16,000 exemption. It has to either be to a person or to a specially designed trust. And why don't we talk about a specially designed trust for the annual gift exemption? Right. This is the... Uh... 
crummy trust. Uh, I have long called this the grandparents' delight. Uh, this is, as Mark made reference to the fact that the annual exclusion gift, it has to be a completed gift. The recipient has to get the money. Uh, it's called a, a present interest. So a gift to most irrevocable trusts don't qualify for the annual exclusion. Just a point of law there for, for just a moment. So this particular trust was developed years ago as a result of a tax court case filing. It, it, the family name on the tax court case was Crummy. That's where the name comes from. Uh, this uh, the, so the evolution is this created an opportunity to give a money to, to make these annual exclusion gifts to a trust. Very interestingly, the money doesn't go to the trust; it goes to the trustee, and that trustee receives the gift on behalf of the child or the grandchild, and then makes that money available to that child or grandchild. If they have an opportunity to take the money, it cleanses it. It makes, the, it makes it a legitimate annual exclusion gift. And the whole game plan is that they don't come get the money. But after it's cleansed, rendered an, a, a legitimate annual exclusion gift, the money stays in the trust, it's invested, it grows, and then it's available for the well-being of that child as he or she ages. So. Think about the 529 plan for a moment, which is also a wonderful opportunity to put money aside, right, for the cost of education for a child. 529 plans are wonderful. There's some tax benefits. It's only for education. What I like about the Crummy Trust is that the money in the Crummy Trust can be used to pay for education. It can be used to pay for health care. It can be much more broadly utilized for the well-being of your child or grandchild. And they may not go to college. They may not need that kind of support. So having money available. That could be that could grow dramatically if you, if you put in the maximum amount. Let's say even a couple does of thirty-two thousand a year, it becomes a small fortune. That's why when we set up these trusts, there's usually a, a, an age limit. In other words, unlike the education fund, the five twenty-nine plan, which really has to be used up while they're in school or it, it, the, the purpose is defeated, here you could say the trust lasts until they're 30, 35, 40. You pick the age. While they're aging to get to that point, the money is used in the discretion of the trustee for anything that child needs uh, for his or her well-being, quality of life. Again, could even be housing. At the age of the sort of the cap, if there's money remaining in the trust, the trust terminates and the money goes to that child. So again, it doesn't have to be the maximum annual exclusion, 16,000 a year. You might put 5,000 a year in, but you're building in flexibility for the benefit of that perfect, perfect grandchild, the kid you want to support and be there for well into the future. Again, I love this. Yeah, I should have had a photo of Miles there, your your two-year-old grandson. Um, we, we need to do that more. I know you guys love sharing photos of him. You have a perfect, That's perfect it. excuse. And he's adorable. He has the little little red hair and the blue eyes. We don't know how he got the red hair, but and, he's and adorable. Did we get up a crummy trust for him? Yes, we did. <laughs> um so let's just kind of just just to I know we're talking about this a lot, but it doesn't you don't so you you should involve a lawyer if it's a young kid, but if it's just the gifts, just to just to show how powerful and how much money this can be. If you do this, and if you're watching this after the January first, twenty twenty three, that's okay. You can do this really any year. Um, but if you plan ahead before the end of twenty twenty two, you could give sixteen thousand dollars to someone on December thirtieth or thirty first, and the next day. You have the seventeen thousand dollar gift for twenty twenty three. You give seventeen thousand dollars to them anytime after the new year. So between the two of those, if it's a couple, that means couple could give thirty two thousand dollars to someone this year, and then thirty four thousand this uh, next year. So that could be you know sixty six thousand um, dollars tax free in a week. To anybody you want, if you add up two people times sixteen thousand plus two people times seven. So all this to say. To be a lot of money, and and this is a way to get money out of your taxable estate. That's pretty simple while helping people while you're alive. Again, if it's a younger beneficiary, younger child, set up the crummy trust. That's crucially, crucially important. Um, so, Mike, why don't you talk about you can gift stock or assets that can appreciate as well? Yeah, I, absolutely. And you know, I I, I want to add that we have so many clients who don't have very large estates, who really don't have estate tax exposure. And they still make these annual exclusion gifts. It feels yeah. they want to be supportive. You know, th this, this whole world of tax planning, there's the objective side. Oh, I have tax issues. I should do this. I should do that. 
But you know, there's the subjective side and that's what life is about. It's what makes you feel good? What, what makes you rest well at night? You've done something very positive. So, you know, paying tuition, how wonderful is that? Huh? Uh, paying medical bills for people who need the help, regardless of whether or not you have a state tax exposure. It's a wonderful way to not just take money to your grave, but have it work for the well-being of your family while you're living. So there's, you know, there's many levels where we think about asset transfers and asset protection and you know, what's it really all about? And, 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 and isn't this what it's really all about? Yeah. So let's get back to what, what Mark was saying um, about other opportunities and maybe kind of an illustration here that if you have some stock, for example, um, you give it away, you may have some, you may have stock as many of our clients do with the value is very low and you believe it's going to explode in value. Well, if you give it away while it's you know startup stock, while you can, if you can transfer it and it's worth a dollar a share, fifty whatever, you give that stock away, you believe it's going to grow. Not only are you removing the growth from your taxable estate, right? Because you're getting out of your estate, you're 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 conveying the wealth, the growth to the recipient, a child, maybe a grandchild, maybe to that crummy trust. Stock can go into that crummy trust, so that can all work. Now, what if it goes up? Um, that's all good. Slight caveat, of course, is that if money is removed from your taxable estate, it escapes the 40% estate tax. So if you have a larger estate, you have to be cognizant of that. If you make a gift of an asset to somebody, they take your cost basis. If you pay $10 a share for some stock, your cost basis is $10. If you sell it for 20, you have a $10 profit or capital gain and you have to pay the approximate 30% capital gains tax on that. So if you give it to somebody directly, they take your cost basis. So if they sell it, they have that exposure. We'll illustrate that in, in, in a couple of minutes. If you keep it, and if it's in your taxable estate when you die, you avoid the 40% estate tax. And there's this thing called the stepped up basis. Stepped up basis means that Whatever the basis was, it increases to reflect the market value on your date of death. So in my simple stock example, if it goes from 10 to 20, the basis goes to 20, they sell it for 20, subtract the new basis of 20, zero gain, zero tax. So again, there's, there's a trade-off as you think about appreciated assets. Sometimes it makes sense to give them away in confidence they'll grow and you want the recipient to enjoy the growth, but you know, cover failing factors. So Here's a simple illustration where Marvin made a gift of $9,000 worth of stock to each kid or three kids. When he passed away, the value of each $9,000 worth of stock was at about $200,000. Now, if they sell it, there's going to be a capital gains tax. If they don't sell it, there is no capital gains tax. They can use it to leverage other loans. It's, it's valuable. It's not necessarily going to have that tax incurred. So keep that much in mind. Uh, if they do sell, there would be a capital gains tax to pay. You know, so what? Right? They're coming out way ahead. Is that a bad thing? Uh, if he held on to it, and particularly if he didn't have a taxable estate, right, they would have gotten the stepped up basis and they could have sold and there'd be no capital gains tax. So the point here, the point is that this stuff is not simple. Um, you have to weigh myriad tax factors, estate tax, gift tax, capital gains tax. And if it's real property, you also have to think about property tax, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking about Prop 19 and the wow. basically the erosion of Prop 13, which was the mainstay for so many Californians. So all of this is complex. It's all doable. It is like it's rocket science. You just have to know the issues, know how to analyze them, and come up with a plan that makes sense for you and your family. Yeah, and, and consult with us if you're not sure. We deal with this day in, day out. We can very quickly and efficiently help you to think through these issues and the trade-offs. And there's often, you don't know what you don't know. You know, sometimes there's a transfer, you think it's relatively simple, but there's some other factor you don't even know about. And that's what we think about all the time. So if you went in doubt, consult with us. And just to circle back, you know, if you're concerned about estate taxes, if you have a larger estate, or, you know, certainly if you're, you're very high net worth now, or if you're in that range where you could get close to where the estate tax exemption is going to drop to, or even close to it, you need to be aware of this. And we have our webinar, Estate Planning for High Net Worth Families. It talks about a lot of examples. We have Mike's book, Beat Estate Tax Forever. Um, bottom line is, though, if you're facing these issues, 
meet with us. You know, if you're an existing client, let's come back. Let's talk about this. And if you're not, meet with us. We can help you update your core estate plan and we can talk through these issues and different strategic options for saving potentially hundreds of thousands or many millions of dollars. I mean, the, the stakes are so high and there's so much that we can do to prevent taxes. Um, Mike, do you have something? It looks like you have something you want to add? No, I, no? I, I'll, I'll come back to my <laughs> couple of minutes. Okay. Um, and health reminders. So it is the time of year where a lot of people are getting sick and we want our community and our client community, but just the general community to remain healthy. So we want to remind you, keep washing your hands. I know at the beginning of COVID, everybody was getting really good about that because we thought that was the primary way it was spread. Turned out it's more airborne, but wash your hands for 20 seconds. Okay. Like, please, you sing happy birthday to you twice, right? So please wash your hands. It'll save you from getting sick. It'll save other people from getting sick. You know, wash my, my mom, my regression gill fix has trained our office a few times on that. You want to get in between your fingers and your palms and the top. So trying to do that here is a small thing. Um, get your flu shot. If you haven't gotten it, so many people are getting the flu. Um, get your booster for your COVID vaccine, especially if you're in a vulnerable um, population group. Um, and get outside and exercise as much as you can, if you can, even in the cold. I am I'm a big believer in exercising in the cold. Mike and I did a little um, mini retreat last weekend where there was a pool that was unheated. It was probably about 42 degrees. And I did some cold plunges and did some workouts outside, but it's so good for your immune system. So good for health. We're lawyers. We're not doctors. We're not giving medical advice, but you know, wash your hands, get some exercise, make sure that you're, you're protected. And if you want to learn more about healthcare advocacy, if you're in the hospital, if you have a loved one who's facing these issues, uh, has to go to the hospital or, or is facing issues, check out Myra's Healthcare Huddle on our website. You just Google Myra's Healthcare Huddle. It's also in the, the blog section of gilfix.com. She's done some amazing research about all of this. So stay healthy, please. Um, now, just a few more points. So let's talk about gifts. Yeah, hey, um, it's the time for gift giving. Everybody has a hard time finding the perfect gift for that loved one yeah. and what the heck they're going to do. Well, how about these hot selling topics yeah. <laughs> that we have authored? And, and on the very serious side, these are practical. They're meant to give you consumable, understandable advice. If you have a special needs child or grandchild in the family, you know, our book is is great. Um, you know, we don't make money on this. This is a, a service. It's something that we feel very, uh, very passionate about, that we need to get consumable, understandable information out into the community. We talked about our estate tax planning book, and we have another one on long-term care and how do you deal with the cost of long-term care, Medi-Cal, quality of care, access, on and on. So these are all available uh, at our office or through Amazon. Uh, as we say at the bottom, they're real page terms. They get you excited. <laughs> um, well, okay, okay, M maybe not, but they're practical. They make a difference. We've had so many folks give us testimonials. Uh, they're accurate, they're reliable, and you know, think about it. So here's another thought, uh, and we've had somebody do this already. Uh, they gave to a client of ours, gave her daughter a gift, an hour of our time. They're going to actually send their daughter in and pay for an hour because their daughter needs help in our realm. And she just never gets around to it, doesn't feel she has the resources, even though she does. So, so you know, it's an idea. And uh, I know Mark yesterday met with the children of a longtime client. They're yeah. adults. They're over 18. And, you know, everybody over 18 needs to have a power of attorney and an advanced directive. So gift or no gift, but it's a good time to think about this. Your kids yeah. have these basic documents. So that's a gift to yourselves as well as to your kids. So, you know, let's think a little bit creatively, have some fun. Hanukkah gifts, Christmas gifts, you never know what might stuff that stocking, huh? <laughs> um, and, and now let's let's circle back to a year-end planning checklist. I think it's good for us that we, we've thrown a lot at you, but I think the end of the year or the beginning of the year is a great time to reflect. Obviously, we have New Year's resolutions. We can reflect on what went well, what didn't go well, what your goals are for the next year. From a planning perspective, crucial, must, must check um, items that we want you to think about. So first, do you have a comprehensive estate plan into place? For most people, that's a revocable living trust, durable power of attorney and uh, for day-to-day -day financial matters and advanced health care directives for your children. Uh, sorry, advanced directives for medical decision-making. And if you have children and especially grandchildren, you may, you should probably have protective trusts for them. There's a lot of options for that. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have a trust or if it's been a long time, 
you need to put one into place. And part two, is your plan up to date? So if you don't have a plan, you need to get one into place. We, of course, can help with that. We've helped thousands of Californians to put estate plans into place. If you have one, and it's been a little while since you looked at it, some questions you need to ask. And this is a good time when you're bringing the family together. Maybe you review this with your family or your loved ones. Do you have the right living trust structure? We did a webinar recently on, do I have the wrong trust structure? Check out the Gilmick's Law web channel. But if you're a couple, the structure of your living trust could have massive implications for estate and gift tax exposure down the road and capital gains tax exposure. Do you have the right successor trustees? We have many clients who come in and they think everything's fine. They look at their backup, the people named to step in for them. And they're people they don't even talk to anymore. Or it's someone who now is sick or someone who's having financial issues. You need to make sure your successor trustees are up to date. If you have kids, and especially if you have grandkids, did you set up family protection trusts, generically known as dynasty trusts, to protect your kids and what you're leaving them from divorce and from lawsuits and from future estate taxes? That is, family protection trusts can save millions of dollars, even if you don't think of yourself as high net worth. When you look one, two, three generations into the future, they can save millions of dollars. We have many other, we've talked about this a lot in other webinars as well. The, our book, Michael Gilvick's book, Be to State Tax Forever, Chapter 9, has a great summary of that as well. If you have a child or a loved one with a disability, you need to have a special needs trust in place. And, and if you already have one, is it properly set up? Do you have the right trustees? So the bottom line is you need to set up a plan if you don't have one. But if you have a plan, we need to make sure it's up to date because a one of date plan can sometimes cause major issues. If you have a larger estate, have you started to plan for the exemption dropping in a couple, in a, just a few years? Um, we need to start thinking about that right now. You do not want to wait for the last minute because we lose a lot of opportunities and there's a lot that we can do in the near term to, to reduce your taxable estate and to think creatively and proactively about how to preserve everything you work so hard for. You, have you used your annual exemption? We gave many examples about that $16,000 annual exemption going to $17,000 next year. If you don't use it, you lose it. It's not like you get to, if you didn't use it in 2022, you don't get to add $16,000 into 2023. So make sure if that's something that interests you, you use it every year. Um, if you own California real estate and you want to leave it for your children or really for anybody and you want them to have the opportunity of holding on to it without a massive property tax increase, especially if you've had long if you've had real estate for a long time, you need to be aware of Prop 19 and have you explored solutions for this. And yes, we've developed many solutions to deal with Prop 19. We can help. Have you reviewed your financial plan and making sure it's it's integrated with your estate plan? You know, are you invested the right way? Are all your accounts linked up? Are your accounts titled in your trust? Are your, if you have life insurance, is that coordinated with your estate plan? We work with some financial advisors who are always happy to help to give people a second look. Uh, but if not, if you have an advisor, make sure you check with them. If you don't, talk to us. We can help connect you with some wonderful people as well. We can help with all. But on the estate planning side, set a meeting with us. And it's the end of the year, you know, the classic thing, Mike talked about this before, we all make resolutions and the rate at which people keep their New Year's resolutions is so low. We are so many people, I, I had a client last week, he, he went to one of our in-person seminars 10 years ago and has been watching our webinars. And, and it's fantastic, he's taking action, but he's not alone. A lot of people, they they know they should, they should take action and it takes years before they act. And thankfully, this family took action. Well, they still could, but a lot of people don't. Um, so overcome the three Ds, the danger of delay and denial. You know, the idea, well, I don't need to worry about protecting my kids from, they won't get divorced. I don't need to worry about a trust for them or I'll get to this later or the classic, if I die. I, I hear that a lot in meetings. It's like, I hate to say it, but we are all going to die unless some, someone has the secret to eternal life. Even if that's out there, I don't know if I want that because it has its own issues. Um, or I already have documents. I did them a long time ago. It's fine. I, I checked that box off my list. A trust needs to be revisited every few years or I don't want to deal with a lawyer. They're annoying. It'll be fine. I'll save some money. Well, you might save a little money now, but you're going to be spending or your family is going to be spending a lot more later or, or your assets will be exposed later. So spending a little bit, investing a little bit now can save so much down the road. And if you have any tax issues, it can save millions of dollars for your family. So we ask, you know, stay tuned for more webinars. Um, if you are watching this as recording, please like, comment, share it if, it if you think it'd be useful. If you're watching live, if you thought this was useful, we're going to post it on our, our YouTube channel, share it with anybody who could benefit from it. Subscribe to our channel. Don't miss the opportunity to protect your assets and to retain control over your life and your purpose. 
take this off your plate. Let us help you with that so you can focus on what matters the most, on, on your legacy and your dreams. We can help you to, to make sure that everything you work for is there for your family and that the right people are empowered to help you if you need that help. So, and of course, if, if we can be of service to you, contact us. We welcome you to join our growing client community. Um, we can review your existing plan, whether we did it years ago, um, or if you did it with a different firm, we can review it very efficiently and, and let you know what, what you might need to do. Um, and we can help build comprehensive solutions for you. So you can easily contact us. We're easy to find, billfix.com um, or billfix.com, my needs, or just our, our page, billfix.com, 650-493-8070 is a very easy way, of course, to reach us. So Subscribe to our channel, spread the word, and talk to us. If you need to set a meeting, if you need to explore these, let's explore these issues. So um, why don't we take a couple questions? We got a couple good ones. And if you have other questions, feel free to enter those in the Q&A function. We have a couple minutes. We're going to take um, at least a few questions. Um, so Mike, why don't, do you want to answer Audrey? Hello, Audrey. Um, yeah. Audrey's question, may, may one pay for daycare, preschool, or private elementary school if they pay directly and still give? that family member, the $16,000. Can you do both? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is yes, you can. Uh, but remember, it's tuition. If it's lunches, that technically doesn't qualify. So it's tuition. Uh, you can pay it for anybody. Again, paying the provider of that uh, that educational opportunity. And then bless you, do any $16,000, soon to be $17,000 gifts that you want to make. The other is uh, is a question, does a crummy trust pay in? David? Yes, yeah. it does. Um, uh, the crummy trust, remember, that's money you shift into a trust for a child or a grandchild or another younger person. Um, it does not have the tax advantages of a 529 plan, but I think it has other advantages. You know, there's pros and cons with everything. So if you're thinking about setting aside money for a child or a, a young, young a grand, a grandchild, you, you don't just do one. You learn about the options. And those are the two most important, the crummy trust and the 529. Uh, those are the two best. You weigh them, you make the decisions that that's right for you. Yeah. And while it does pay income tax, it's it's only on income generated by the assets in it. So, you know, if you put if there's seventy thousand dollars in a crummy trust, it's not taxed on seventy thousand, it'd just be on the dividends produced by the assets in the crummy trust. So it's usually pretty minimal. And on the flip side, we've had a few clients. We had a stretch where in like two weeks I had three different clients come in where they or other family members had funded um either 529 plans or transfer to minor accounts and where they just use the $16,000 annual exemptions over many years to put into those into the simple accounts where their grandchild was going to get full control at the age of 18. And they were frantically asking us if we come up with other solutions because they didn't want their 17 year old grandchild to come into what was then like $500,000 at the age of 18 because they didn't set up for me trusts ahead of time. So Think ahead, you realize that if you set up a transfer to minor act account or a simple solution, it could cause big problems down the road. Um, or, Linnea? Does the second, Linnea, hello, uh, does mm -hmm. the second to die, the second spouse to pass, uh, still have the total estate tax exemption of the former couple? In other words, uh, if you're a couple, currently the level of protection is is very high, you know, like 20, 20, Let's say it's 24 million to keep it simple. Okay. So, yeah, there's some, it, if your trust is what is generically called an AB trust where it splits, that definitely captures the maximum level of estate tax protection for each spouse and you have the max. If you have a simpler alternative approach where the trust doesn't divide, if the trust is written properly, we have this con concept called portability, which in essence means that even then, even then, at the time of the first death, the survivor can still take full advantage of the first decedent's maximum level of protection and then have her own at the second passing. So it isn't always easy. It isn't automatic, but yes, the answer is yes. Yeah, but very crucial. If, if you lose a loved one, they have to work with a lawyer. We, we Francis Lepaul heads our trust administration practice. Um, he We've helped hundreds and hundreds of families to make sure they don't screw this up. Because when one spouse passed away, if you don't make the right filings, if you don't do things right, you might lose one spouse's estate tax exemption. So got to talk to a lawyer there. The stakes are so, so high. I mean, that's where we talked before about, do you have the right trust structure? Mike just alluded to that too. AB, not AB. If you, if it's been a while since you looked at your trust, 
let's set a meeting and look at it and look at the size of your state, your tax issues, and make sure you have the right structure. And if not, we can make changes to them. So um, I think on that note, um, I think we're going to wrap things up, but I want to thank everybody for spending time with us. We had such a great turnout today um, with not much warning. So thank you all for joining us today. I hope everybody, as my mom, Myra, likes to say, I hope everybody's staying safe, sane, and healthy um, as we approach the holidays. Mike, any final final thoughts for you? I just, you know, we wish everyone, you know, a thoughtful, thoughtful time. Uh, you know, I believe... Uh, Benchmarks like holidays like this are, are meant for us to really think about our lives and our families and you know, whatever realm, wherever that might take you, you know, I hope it's a, it's a positive thing. Um, and we look forward to a wonderful 2023 and sharing it with everybody. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much and take care. Yeah.